Okay, so I am here on the Fire Integration Quick Start page. Uh, the link to this page is in the GitHub uh, README. So basically, I've logged in already into my InterSystems account. And now since I'm logged in, in here, instead of seeing the Login and Register buttons, I see this Provision Sandbox button. So I'm going to click on it. And this is basically creating a sandbox inter-system Iris for Health container in one of their servers. So this sandbox will last only for three days. If you want to have something that lasts longer, you can either like configure a full production inter-systems Iris container by talking to inter-systems. And I think they also have a community edition that you can install in your local machine or in a server uh, from a Docker image for, for development and testing purposes. Okay, so my sandbox is ready. Here I have the username and the password. And here I have the IP for the IDE. So basically it's not only created a sandbox Iris container, but it, it has created like an entire IDE and we're going to see it in a second. So let's follow the instructions. So I'm just going to click here on Sandbox IDE. And here is my development environment. It's built on Visual Studio Code and it is really nice. So there is a terminal. Basically, there's also a web terminal, which is the one that we are going to use. And there's the management portal. So let's just follow the instructions to configure the fire server, put it in production, like uh, having it uh, running, and also seeding it with a sample patient. Okay, so basically we have to open the management portal. So that's here. There's systems management portal. Okay. Great, and now we have to switch the namespace. We have to go to the fire server namespace. Okay, we're good. And then health fire configuration server configuration. Okay, health, here's fire configuration and server configuration, great. So in here, we're going to click the plus sign to add a new endpoint. And now, I will want to use version 40. Okay. and this name is fine with me. So finish, and it is creating my endpoint. So this is going to take a few minutes. Okay, so it looks like our endpoint is ready and there's a couple more things that we have to do. We have to set the service config name to this here. Oh yeah, we have, we have to click edit first. Okay, and also allow an end an authenticated access just because we are in a development environment. So I'm going to update it and we are good to go. Okay, so now we have to start our server. So for that, we have to go to, uh, we have to open the management console again. So I'm going to close this and open it from here, from the IDE management portal, and now interoperability. Uh, configure, and then production. Okay, actually I'm in the user namespace because that's the default one, so I have to switch to the fire server. That's why I'm not seeing it here. So in here, we just have to click start. 
and the production will start. Okay, so we are good. Our fire server is live now. And lastly, we are going to seed this server with this fake patient, Chris Herman. So for that, we have to open the web terminal from the IDE, so InterSystems Web Terminal, and we have to log in. And basically, we log in with the credentials that we were given for the sandbox, which are tech and demo. And we are in. So basically, we just have to execute these two commands. First, we are going to set the namespace to fire server. Okay, good. And now we are going to copy this one, which will see the data. Great, so now this patient is loaded. It has 108 fire resources. So basically that's all. Our fire server is now configured. Okay, so I've created a new file in Visual Studio Code called index.html, and I'm just going to add some HTML boilerplate. There we go. And the easiest way to include the fire patient viewer in your project is to follow the quick start guide and just include this in your HTML, which is basically including the CSS and JavaScript files from the dist folder. So those are these ones and these ones. And then in between, we need a div with an ID of fire-visualizer. And then we need a couple global variables that we're going to add here. So I'm just going to add the two CSS files, the two CSS links here in my head. I'm going to add all the other stuff in the body. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the comments and format the code. Great. And now in here, for the global variables, uh, in here, basically, we have to substitute all this for for our intersystems external id ip which is this one here and then at the end have our endpoint which is this and let's just check that it matches our endpoint so in our management portal again switch to fire server health Fire configuration, server configuration. Here is our endpoint, so that matches this. Yeah. And then we add at the beginning HTTP colon slash slash and the address that we have. And this looks good. And now in here, this is the patient ID. Now we only have one patient with an ID of one, so this is the so we'll just hard code this. But in here, if this was a production environment, we'd want to pass in the ID of the patient that we want to display from the server or grab it from the URL or from the query string, etc. So I'm going to save this and open it with live server. And there we go. So basically the viewer is reactive, so we can go into any of the resources and open it. And basically there is no page reload. It's a single page rendering. And we can go over like any of the resources and then resources linked to each other. And basically the layout is responsive. So now I just have a single div that is taking the whole space of the screen of the window, but you can render it inside any other div or container, etc. So if you want to modify the actual files and create your own distribution files or just include it in your project as a view project, 
basically you need to clone the repository and then you need to run npm install that will install all the dependencies including Vue.js this is built using Vue.js then you have to uh, test it in your local host by running npm run serve and then you modify the view files, the view components, which are here, as you wish. And then once you are done, you execute npm run build, and that will generate new CSS and JS files inside your dist folder. And you can include those files in your own project. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.